Let's do a quick review of how automation network technology has developed over the past 30 or 40 years or so. Before the 1980s, the way machinery and systems were typically wired up in that time was by using discrete wiring. What this typically meant was that for every device on a machine or within a system, you were looking at separate pairs of wires or even wiring harnesses that were connecting everything together. The machines that we had in those days were very complex, they were hard to maintain and expensive to build. If you had a production change which meant you had to change the function of your machinery, you had to do a lot of rewiring. So along in the 1980s, we took a step forward and this was when we first started to see the appearance of field buses. Now you could simply connect different devices on your machine or system together using a single cable. It gave you better performance, it gave you diagnostics, and if you needed to reconfigure things, it was a lot simpler to deal with. The drawback we still had with field buses was that there was many different field buses available and they were all essentially not compatible with each other. In the 2000s, we started to see industrial ethernet. This addressed the different physical layer problem. You were now starting to see different networks that could just be implemented using ethernet. However, the big drawback of ethernet at this point was that it was not deterministic. If you're running a production line with high-speed machinery, suddenly synchronization on a millisecond level starts to be very important. So therefore, if we couldn't guarantee when a given event was going to occur, and hence how deterministic it was, it meant that we were still having problems. In and around 2010, we started to see industrial ethernet protocols arrived that ran on top of the ethernet physical layer. And the main benefit that these delivered was that now we had determinism. In 2011, along came the Industry 4.0 concept. And so now we were looking at many, many different devices, all seeking to share information with each other in a machine or system. Now we're looking at the need to have bandwidth available to make sure that all this volume of information that we were trying to share throughout a process or a machine could be shared in real time and in high volumes. So now the challenge has become we need to make sure that we have networks that actually offer this kind of bandwidth to make this possible. We hope you found this video useful. For more information, please visit our YouTube channel.